So to overview the, the workflow that I use, uh, I'm going to be using an older model I have of the Barcelona Pavilion. And I know that this Barcelona Pavilion model is not 100% accurate, but for our purposes, it'll work just fine. As you create a model of your own, my suggestion is to be very careful about your layers and grouping different objects together. Um, as we start to apply textures and materials to this project, we're going to want to make sure we have control over the kind of the texture mapping. Um, and also, we don't want to create endless numbers of objects. Uh, Unreal Engine will work with meshes, and that's something we can do here in Rhino to simplify our workflow. But Datasmith is also able to take quite a bit of geometry from Rhino and move it in for our use in Unreal. The other thing I want to point out is I'm using V-Ray. Uh, V-Ray for Rhino is a great uh, add-in. It's something I use quite often. And although I've set up materials here, ultimately I'm going to be recreating these materials in Unreal Engine. Making the materials here in uh, V-Ray for Rhino just lets me get my texture mapping set just right. Say for instance this travertine stone. This is on the base, the walls, and the bench. If I go into a rendered view here, you can see that I've already laid out that travertine so that it's a particular size. In coming into the travertine walls, which includes includes the base, I can say select all objects, and I can modify the texture map properties of those pieces. So let's double the scale. Um, we'll go 160. Oops, that's too much. 160 by 160. So that's the scale of the travertine, which you can see is now scaled up. That's important because we're going to be controlling the texture map in Rhino and applying materials in Unreal. The other uh, materials that we have in here is a glass that's uh, a default from V-Ray. We'll be replacing it. We have a, a kind of a soft polished aluminum on the cruciform columns and the glass frames. You can see we have uh, other stone textures and the iconic book match texture here. Uh, I don't have a water texture. That's something I'll generate. Um, in, a, in a future video, I'll show you how to create some stones using Quixel uh, and Megascans. You can see we have a mesh model of the statue in the back. And this is all we really need in our Rhino file. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, do a save as, and I'm going to name this the Barcelona Pavilion Texture. I'm making sure that it's set for Rhino 5. Rhino 6 is the newest version. That's the version I'm using. But Datasmith isn't currently taking Rhino 6 files into Unreal. Uh, so once I have that, I'm going to swap over to Unreal and import this model. So here in Unreal, I'm going to come up to the Import Datasmith button and use the dropdown to import CAD. I can then navigate to my uh, Rhino 3D model and click Open. Uh, you can see it asks where to put this uh, imported data. We're going to put it in our Content folder. That's our root folder here in Unreal Engine. So I'll say OK. It asks me a few settings here. We can go ahead and import materials and textures. I have no lights, I have no cameras, so there's no reason for me to import those. But I can click Import and give it a few minutes to go through all the process. If you have a file with lots and lots of geometry, or very small pieces, or very complicated meshes, this could take quite a while. Uh, for me, this quickly, I'm able to bring in all of those files. It also creates a textures folder and a materials folder these materials are the ones that have been uh, approximated to match what I have in V-Ray. So if I come down here, you can see that we have some issues already. Here, this texture didn't appear. That texture did. The reason for that is because these textures may be set up with uh, different surface normals. So here, uh, if I look here, I can see in my details, it's using, uh, well, this one's actually using aluminum. That's not right. I definitely do not want this to be aluminum, so I can come back in. I have my book match. I have my red object, but I do not have hmm, I do not have my green wall. So let's jump back over to Rhino and see why that would. So here in Rhino, I can see that that texture is mapped correctly. And if I go into V-Ray, as an editor, this is just the green wall. I'll apply it one more time, and we see nothing changes. I can check that my properties. This is on the green wall. So it randomly becoming uh, brushed aluminum in Unreal seems to be just a strange glitch. Let's jump back over and see if we can fix that. All right, so back in Unreal, I see that that texture just simply did not come through. We do not have the material for it. I can look at my textures, and I have my book match zone, but I do not have uh, my just my green stone. If I go to materials, the one nice thing I see is if I drag a different material, 
it is mapped correctly so that this texture would fill the entire space. For now, the texture map is what we need, and because I know we're going to be recreating materials, I'm going to leave it alone. The other thing I can do here is make some minor edits. I know that the roofs of the Barcelona Pavilion are not black, so I can open this black material, and this is actually a material instance. A material instance is using the Datasmith default material with some parameters changed. I'm going to go ahead and just set it so that we have a very light gray for the material. I can save that. And again, this is something that I can replace in the future. One more thing to look at. If we look around, sometimes pieces just start disappearing. And the reason for that is because we're having a, a, you know, differences in normal. What I'm going to do is just edit the white again and then open the Datasmith parent material by double clicking here. In here, I'm going to set this material to be a two-sided material. So you can see there's a lot more complexity to this and we're going to build even more complicated textures in the future. By moving to a two-sided material, that makes sure that the material shows up on both sides of the surface. And by fixing that parent, we'll fix all the sub-objects below it. Well, we should. Let's look here at the travertine. It's using a different material. You can see here this one is using um, uh, actually uh, texture maps. So we'll make this again a two-sided material. We'll save this and give it a second to update. By saving the parent material, you can see that the, the instance materials also reflect those changes. And so now we're getting uh, material on all the faces that we need. The nice thing I want to show you is that we can make changes in Rhino that will affect everything here in Unreal Engine. So if I jump over to my Rhino file and say move the roof up 25 feet, so now the roof's much higher, I can save this file Again, I want to make sure that it's a Rhino 5 file. Save and replace that existing file. By jumping back over to Unreal, I can go to my Barcelona folder. I can right click this Datasmith scene and re import the geometry. This will then update. It's a, like a live link between Rhino and Unreal. It doesn't automatically update, but I can very quickly make the changes in Rhino and bring the new file back into Unreal. Once this gets done, there we go. You can see the roof has now been moved up 25 feet. We still have some issues uh, that you can see the textures had reset themselves. So if I go back to, sorry, if I go to materials, I'll just change this again. Um, and whoops, no saturation, light color there, save. And that easy, I'm able to create differences here in Unreal uh, by changing my Rhino model. In the next file, I want to show you some software on creating uh, the maps and materials uh, and using a master material, and that's coming next.